everyone. In this video, I am going to be going over the Tubular Quad V6. This is a custom FPV freestyle frame that I have designed and built from scratch. And this is the sixth iteration of this frame. I have been flying and improving this general design for the past three and a half years now. In my previous video, I went over all of the little design changes I made going from the version 5 to the version 6. So if you want to see every little last detail about the design, make sure to go watch that video. In this video, I'm going to go over how I made this frame with relatively basic tools, the general design philosophy, and why tubes are better than carbon plate for arms. And at the end of the video, I will give you guys instructions on how you can obtain the free plans. Now I put a lot of work into this video and into this design and these videos generally don't do too well on YouTube so I really would appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. So with that out of the way, let's see how this frame is built. So here I'm using my one-to-one -one drawings as a template, and that gives me the exact hole locations and exact shapes of the carbon plate parts. And then I mark all of the hole locations with an awl and a mallet to get the hole locations exactly correct. This is very critical. And then drilling pilot holes. I'm using a two millimeter drill bit to drill the rear 20 by 20 stack holes. And then I'm using a three millimeter drill bit for all of the motor mount holes and standoff holes and arm mounting holes. And then I use a four millimeter drill bit for all of the rounds on the cutouts and the rounds on the outsides of the flat carbon plate parts. And then I use a big drill bit for the center holes of the motor mounts. I'm using a Dremel outside to rough cut all of the carbon plate parts. And I'm really just trying to get off as much material as I can without cutting too far. That makes my life easier for the next steps. And for some of the cutouts in the middle of the parts, I have to flip the part over in order to get the cutoff wheel to make a deep enough cut. And I'm using a disc sander to sand down to the line where I can. And then everywhere that I can't reach with the Dremel or the disc sander, I have to do it by hand with a set of files. Now you can see I am soaking the parts in water so that I can get the paper off. And this works because I used a glue stick for crafts, so it's washable. And that makes it so I don't have to sand the paper off and ruin the finish of the carbon parts. Now I'm cutting all of the tubes to rough length and then getting them exact on the disc sander. And then I'm cutting shorter segments that go inside the arms to strengthen them where the arm screws go through. Now I'm sanding those segments and then using epoxy to glue them inside the arms themselves.
Now I'm putting together this 3D printed jig. And this slides on to the end of the arms so that you can get the hole locations for the arms exactly correct because it's otherwise very hard to drill onto the round tubes. Now I'm installing the press nuts into the mid plate. And now I'm bolting the arms on. And then I'm putting the mid plate on and I have to go around all the screw holes and tighten them down a little at a time. Now I'm sanding the area of the arm and the motor mount where they touch. And then using epoxy again to secure the motor mounts in place. And I use two rulers or any two straight edges to balance on the motor mounts and that gets them straight. Now I'm using carbon toe and wrapping it around the tabs on the motor mounts. And you can see I use super glue to tack the carbon toe in place. And then I'm measuring out some epoxy laminating resin, which is thinner than normal epoxy. And I'm soaking this into all of those carbon fibers, and this is what really gives the motor mount strength. Now I'm using a Dremel to cut out the notch for the motor wires and filing that down. And now it's just a matter of putting all of the hardware on and finishing up this frame. All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing how I built this frame without a CNC machine. Now let's talk about the design philosophy of the tubular quad. So at the time that I built the version one, I was flying the six inch alien and I liked the six inch aspect of the six inch alien because I found that six inch twin blades compared to five inch tri blades had better speed, better grip, better efficiency, and just general effortlessness to the way they flew, which I really like. Now I had some problems with the alien frame itself. It was rather heavy and the pitch response was sluggish compared to the roll response. So what I wanted was a six inch frame that was a true X that was lightweight and I couldn't find anything that I could buy that met those requirements. So I ended up building the first version of the tubular quad. The tubular quad fits six inch props with space between all the props to give all the props clean airflow, which helps avoid tuning issues. And it is a true X configuration to give similar pitch and roll response. It is very light. The version six comes in at 102 grams, which is 0.6 grams lighter than the version five. And the battery actually goes on sideways toilet tank style, which allows for a very short fuselage, which gets all of the mass very close to the middle of the quad, which gives the quad a very low moment of inertia, which improves the response and snappiness of the frame. And of course, the biggest feature of the tubular quad is the fact that it uses tubular arms instead of flat carbon plate arms. So there are quite a few advantages to tubular arms compared to flat carbon plate arms. The first of which is that if you are making a frame by hand like I do, they are a lot easier to work with than trying to cut through four or five millimeter thick carbon plate. Also a circular profile moving through the air has about half the coefficient of drag as a square or rectangular profile moving through the air. So that means that tubular arms have less drag than flat carbon plate arms. And because tubes are hollow, they are a lot stronger and stiffer compared to flat carbon plate arms, which are not hollow. 
So because the shape is stronger, you can actually get away with using less carbon, which makes tubular arms lighter. And because they are stiffer, this helps avoid tuning issues because the resonant frequencies of the frame are going to be higher. And flight controllers have an easier time filtering out higher frequencies compared to lower frequencies. So consequently, I've had no tuning issues with any version of the tubular quad because it is such a stiff frame. Now, the last advantage of tubular arms is possibly my favorite, and that is the fact that you can run your motor wires through the arms. So on this quad, there is this notch that the motor wires run through, and then they come out either off to the sides or front and back in the middle here. And that keeps the aesthetics clean. It keeps the aerodynamics clean, and it also prevents your motor wires from getting chopped off if you bend a prop. So let's talk about the general design of this frame. So the arms are 12 millimeter outer diameter and they are one millimeter thick, except for where the arm holes are. And I have added a smaller tube inside the larger tube to make the wall thickness two millimeters thick to address the stress concentrations that are caused by the screw holes. The motor mounts and all the other carbon plates are two millimeters thick. This is so that you can just get a single plate and build all of the flat carbon plate pieces. There is a tab on each side of the motor mount where carbon toe is wrapped around and soaked in laminating resin. And this gives a really strong motor mount. This is probably the hardest part of designing a frame with tubular arms is getting a flat place for the motor to sit. So this design has worked really well for the past few versions. Moving on, there is the typical arm sandwich design where we have the bottom plate, the arms, and then a mid plate. The orientation of the carbon fibers for the mid plate actually goes this way in the same direction of the arms, whereas for the bottom and top plate, it goes along the length of the fuselage. And this orientation of the carbon fibers makes these parts as strong as they can be. And you can see that I use five standoffs. The fifth standoff was added in the last version, and I'm trying to get away with just five standoffs instead of six so that I'm not adding unnecessary metal to the frame because metal is heavy. So this frame comes in at 102 grams. The previous version came in at 102.6 grams. So there's a little bit of weight savings. The biggest change to the version six compared to the version five is that I've moved to a 20 by 20 mounting pattern for the stack. And yes, I use the arm screws as the stack screws, and that is to save weight. So the reason that I've moved to 20 by 20 is that all of the modern 30 by 30 four in one ESCs are totally overkill for my application. Most of them are rated for 60 amps or more per motor, which is insane compared to the older 30 by 30 four in one ESCs that were closer to 30 amps per motor. So because the frame is so light and I use such light electronics, I don't need huge motors. And in turn, I don't draw a lot of power from this quad. So on 4S at full throttle, I only pull around 80 amps. So really, I only need maybe a 25 amp 4-in-1 ESC. So the 20 by 20 offerings are much more reasonable for my needs. So that is why I've gone to this 20 by 20 pattern. This also allows all of the arm screws to move in a little bit, which makes the mid plate a little bit smaller and the bottom plate a little bit smaller, which saves a little bit of weight. So that's where that 0.6 of a gram probably comes from. And the other big change for the version six is that it now supports digital in the form of the Cadex Vista. So you can fit the Cadex Vista in the back of the fuselage here with this diagonal 20 by 20 mounting pattern. And of course you can use this 20 by 20 mounting pattern for whatever else you want. So it is worth mentioning that the mounting pattern in the back is M2, whereas the mounting pattern in the middle is M3. So if you want the free plans to the tubular quad version six, just go to my channel page, Timmy RC, go to the about tab and scroll down, click on for business inquiries, and you can find my email address there. Just shoot me an email asking for the plans and I will be more than happy to send them to you. Just know that these plans and this design are my intellectual property and they are for private use only. The reason why I like doing this through email is just so I can interact with you guys a little bit more. And if you do build my design or any kind of version of my design, please send me pictures. I really like seeing what you guys do. And I like to repost any kinds of tubular quads on my Instagram page.
So in the next video, I'm going to be installing the electronics into the tubular quad version six and going over why I use the electronics that I do. And I will also show all the extra goodies I have for this frame, such as the custom GoPro mount. So let me know down in the comments what you think of the tubular quad. Please like this video if you liked it. Once again, I put a lot of work into this video. And if you enjoy this content and want to help support the channel, just click that subscribe button. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can also support me on Patreon as well. Lastly, I have an Instagram page, timmy.r.c, if you can't get enough of me here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.